In this video, we are going to talk exclusively about comparing player driver with other API testing tools, for example, REST Sharp. So this particular source code, as I told you on the beginning of this section, this source code is actually from the Playwright course, which I have created for Udemy. And that's the reason you actually see the REST Sharp demo over here. And there is a REST Sharp spec flow as well. And we just included the Playwright API testing project over here and start creating the Playwright driver and the unit test file. And that's all good. We just tried doing it and it's all working fine, which is great. But in reality, this project, as I told you, is using the application that I created exclusively for the REST Sharp course. So I will just do a quick bragging of that course that I created on the Udemy. The reason why is because that particular course that we talked about in the REST Sharp actually has got quite a neat feature. For example, as you can see this particular code over here, we are trying to create an object for the Playwright driver even though using the Playwright driver over here, as you can see. We're creating an object here and then we are trying to get the response and then we are trying to deserialize this response and then once the deserialization is done using this property name case in situ or whatever, we are also doing the assertions over here. And if I wanted to do a uh, operation, for example, the get operation for a product, I need to pass the token, which is nothing but the header over here. And you can see that it's all scaffolded inside this particular get operation. And at the same time, we are doing the same response back, deserializing it, and then we're doing an assertion over here. I know it's a quite a lot of code here, but how to make this code more readable? I know this code is not that bad readable. I mean, it is quite good in terms of like line by line, you know what it is and you know what you're trying to do. But in order to make this code even more readable, we created this REST Sharp course in a way that you could actually read the whole code much, much better. So if you just go to the basic test.cs file in the REST Sharp, you can see that we are actually using some dependency injections and stuff and we're using a REST factory code where you can see that we are doing the same operation like the get by product by ID, where you can see that we are doing a with request for the request that I'm passing in, and with header, pretty much exactly that, the same header that you just saw, and with get, you can see that we're passing in the product type for the deserialization, and then we're doing an assertions here. So this whole line, so technically this is like just one line of code I have just made into multiple lines. You can, because this is like a builder pattern, we can just keep calling all the relevant methods. If you just hit dot, you can see all the different method comes in. And these are the methods that we wrote on the course. So this is not like a out of the box method from the library. These are the methods that we wrote in the builder pattern over here. And once you have all these methods, you'll also notice that we are doing an assertions here. So basically it's like two lines to perform the same operation that we see over here, as you can. So that is the difference between the REST Sharp code that we wrote versus the Playwright code. And you may ask like, why not we write the same kind of behavior in the Playwright as well? Of course we can. There is no difference between both of them, the REST Sharp as well as the Playwright. You could do the exact same thing. But just that, the thing is, this particular code that you have at the moment is like a basic Playwright code where you need to convert that to a builder pattern, something like this. You could achieve that. So the whole idea about this video is just to brag that that course, we have detailedly covered the whole thing in the REST Sharp. And if you have that course learned, you know how to convert this code into this format of code without any problem. And demonstrate how this code actually runs. I'm gonna run the application. And if I just go back and run this particular test, you will see that it is going to do the exact operation, like get operation that you just saw over there. That's it. This is about this video. Basically, this is to show you how you can write better code, pretty much like from here to this with the builder patterns and dependency injections and stuff. 